Divorce hearing today. Went great, feeling great. Original post. My 33 male wife 33 female cheated on me in December. I walked in on them at his house as I knew what was going on. It was my stepdaughter's father. I have been kicking him off our property for years and keeping his anger in check. I spent all day taking care of the house, the pets, the yard, and her daughter, four female. When we got married, she had me donate my beater so I could drive one of her cars. I even did a little part-time work on the side at the law firm she works at. My days began at 6 in the morning and ended as late as 2 a.m. some nights because of all the chores I was responsible for. I tried to forgive her but continued catching her talking to him and even making plans to sleep with other male friends, all the while assuring me she wanted us to work. She mistreated me sexually and emotionally, telling me that cheating was my fault because I should have done something to stop it, and using guilt and threats to make me sleep with her when I was clear I wasn't ready for that. She got pregnant after I caught her with him and I asked for a DNA test. Instead, she went and got an abortion immediately and blamed me for that too. I decided to leave last month and quit my job. Since then, my family has been supporting me and I struggle every day to get out of bed and even just feed myself. We were married less than a year. I am getting no spousal support, no car, had to leave my job, lost half of my family, her family, my stepdaughter, I have no home, and was left with no money. If it wasn't for my family helping me, I would be completely homeless. My mental health is in a bad place as I have found out that cheating was happening even when we were just dating. It was all fake or some kind of game for her, and I'm left to pick up the pieces. I was cheated on and maltreated, and I am the only one being punished. I'm told there's little I can do by my lawyer whom I trust a great deal. He is a trusted family friend. What do I do with all this emotion? How do I fix myself? I know I need to take baby steps, get another job etc, but leaving the house feels like an insurmountable task right now. I'm struggling with severe depression and anxiety in public. Even being with my friends is extremely taxing and leaves me a sobbing mess when I finally can drive home. I feel broken and nothing is getting better and I don't know what to do. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. OP, you need therapy. EDMR for trauma because betrayal and mistreatment can cause PTSD. In fact, your depression or anxiety might be PTSD related. I'm sorry that your marriage ended and this person you were to love and trust and that you was so horrid. None of what they did or how they behaved was your fault at all. She sounds like a complete narcissist or sociopath. And all your emotion, normal. Time will help but also a good therapist will also help. Until you are able to start therapy, get a notebook and start a journal, write whatever you wish, what you are feeling, how you feel, what happened to you. Before you met her, how were you? I hate hearing someone was treated this bad by anyone. Please take care of yourself and be kind to yourself here. I was happy living in a little apartment I loved. I spent my days cooking new meals for friends, making crafts, or out hiking, biking, and kayaking all over my home state. I used to like to rock climb and sit in high trees or rocks to admire the landscapes here in the Midwest. I saved my money and traveled to Scotland and Germany with dreams of going to see Siberia someday. The other day, a good friend and I sat out on a flooded quarry in kayaks, ate wild grapes that were growing on the shoreline, talked about apes, and reminisced for hours. It was the happiest I've been in a long time, but I still sobbed all the way home that night. I feel like I am drowning and that person I used to be is dead and I'm just faking it. I will see what I can do about therapy once I get a stable job going. I have a notebook going already, too. She tried hard to gaslight me once my friends found out, and I didn't want to forget all the things she had done so I made a list and a timeline. You sound like an amazing person OP. Yes you are that same person, except you were treated horribly by someone you trusted, when you never should have trusted them. Truthfully, she sounds like a narc, they pick not the weak, they are not the challenge, they try to bring down the strong, own that. And even strong people cry and break down and deserve help. But we or you will repay others for all the help they have given you, no. She was the fake, you are real. She is now your enemy, and as you look back, you might see the red flags that you ignored. You need to truly recognize those to not pick someone like her again to be close to. There are people out there that would never hurt another like she did or does. Focus on you and healing, and go no contact with her. She doesn't deserve you, she isn't worthy. I appreciate the kind words, but I'm just a totally average guy and I just want my simple life back. I don't think I'll be ready to trust another partner for a long time if ever. I'd hate to project any leftover insecurities on a new relationship. Aside from getting tax info from her for the divorce, we haven't been talking. She's mad that I wanted one of her cars so I would have reliable transportation. Fortunately, she lives about 50 minutes north of where I am now living, so the risk of seeing her around is small unless she shows up somewhere. 
Don't ever just do something for your significant other especially one you don't know. As you guys were not together long you did not know her. Sorry OP, but you asked for this when you said you had to keep kicking her ex out of the property as he was there likely because your wife was telling him to come. He was showing up to try and assault me and take his daughter from me while I was home alone with her. The signs are there now, but I figured that since we had been together since her daughter was a baby, I could trust her and I suppose that is my mistake. Now for the first update. A friend informed me that my ex-wife will be bringing the affair partner to the divorce hearing as a final jab at me. How should I deal with this? Several friends have offered to come as support, but some have said I should just do my best to ignore them. What would you do? Take a picture of them together. Because in a few months or years, they will be back in that same court getting divorced as well, because one of them is cheating again. Just wait, it will happen. My ex-wife has cheated on everyone she has dated since high school. It came out during couples therapy by her own admission. She had cheated on her previous boyfriend with me and I had no idea. Seems to just be her MO and the affair partner was physically harming her a few years before we got together, but I'm sure they'll be very happy this time. I would greet the guy and thank him, then hand him a sheet of paper that lists all her exes, their contact info and info on how she cheated on each of them. Tell the affair partner I wish someone would have done this for me, because I had no clue she was cheating with me on her last relationship. Tell me you won't have the biggest grin on your face while the lawyers are talking about divorce, and you are watching him reading the paper and her getting nervous. OP, dress for success that day, be in your better suit, and go as if it was the most important day of your life. In the courtroom, be as kindest and well-behaved man as you can and tell your friends to do the same. But if any of you have to talk to them, do it only through your lawyer and or apply the grey rock to them. Try ignore them as much as possible and try not to even look at them. Your attitude should be like you were there to pay your taxes. Just go and do whatever you need to do, sign everything and leave with your friends. After all that, just say okay boys, beers are on me, and invite your lawyer to drink with you and your friends. Showing indifference towards your ex and affair partner without being a jerk will hurt their ego more than you being angry or in pain. They will try to press your buttons, but remember if you fall in this, they win. Don't let them win. Already have the suit picked out. This will likely be my plan. I've known my best friend for over 30 years, and he and I are gonna have a day out after court. Just say something like, you bring him now, so he isn't shocked when he has to come back later. Funny story, they're already adversarial in court over their daughter. He's trying to get out of paying child support because he is a deadbeat dad. Damn, what a mess. Well, toxic people attract toxic people, I guess. Poor kid. She's really suffering in all this and it kills me. I had her every day till suddenly I was gone. She's already got issues from her bio dad mistreating her, and I'm sure that's only going to get worse. And now for the second update. My divorce hearing was finally today. My post history contains my full story, but TLDR, I was mistreated by my ex-wife after catching her in our bed with another man days after Christmas last year. I tried to reconcile, but as time went on, I kept catching her talking to the same guy and even planning to go see others out of town while getting inappropriate raunchy snapshots and texts from them all while lying to my face and telling me she has cut contact. Every. Single. Time. Same story. I finally told her I was leaving and would be filing for divorce, and she told me again that if I left, she would end me. Here we are though. I am alive and she is permanently out of my life. I came home from the courthouse and hit a few new maxes in the gym, and I'm all around feeling great. She doesn't know where I live, moved out of town, and she doesn't know where my new job is. This woman, who I love dearly and would have done anything for, took everything from me. My job, my car, my home, my stepdaughter, my marriage, my mental health, and potentially my baby, even though I am confident it was a fair partner's baby, she terminated it when I asked for a DNA test. This entire year has been an unending hell for me, and all the while she blamed me for leaving and tearing apart our family. By the time she arrived this morning, I was already speaking to my lawyer. We just had to be present and get the papers signed by the judge. I never looked at her once, not even when she tried to hand me mail from the house. I just grabbed it and kept walking. I did notice that a fair partner didn't come with her, on since she had been saying to mutual friends he would be coming with. Everything proceeds fine. I was stressed and emotional on the inside, but I kept a gentle smile on my face and kept my spirits high. She was sounding like she was about to cry, but I never looked. It wasn't till I got home that I noticed a note mixed in with my mail. A fair partner wasn't there because he got some other girl he was seeing pregnant. I tore it up and threw it away. She had a loving husband, and she cheated, lied, and hurt me till I left her, and she did it for a loser that was seeing other girls anyway. The cherry on top is that, a fair partner hates being a father. 
He is lazy, beat my ex-wife when they were together, and drops his daughter off with his mother anytime he has her. The kid called him by his first name and called me dad because she barely knew the guy. His own mother cried on Christmas while we shared a drink because she was so happy her granddaughter had me in her life. This new baby will destroy his life even further. My only hope is that whomever he is having this baby with gets away from him as soon as possible for the baby's sake. Despite how high energy I am, I feel very alone today and am bouncing between very happy and very muted. Sorry if this is all over the place, I'm just feeling very strange. I thought it would feel better, but if I'm being honest, I wish none of us were suffering. You're allowed to grieve. You're allowed to be sad. It almost sounds like you will miss her daughter more than her. I get the impression that you enjoyed being a dad. There is still time to find someone who will be all in just for you. I started over at 32. I was found by a truly amazing woman. We've been a couple for 26 years, married 24. I'm in my 30s as well, so this was nice to read. I'm glad you are doing well. I also caught my ex with her affair partner. We were two months from our wedding day. At least there was no need for a divorce. She moved out of our house the next day and in with her affair partner. What happened after was something I never would have thought in my wildest dreams. I posted my story a while ago you would like to read it. I'll take a look, I hope you're doing well now. You really need to get to therapy to work on yourself. Her cheating is not on you, but you have given this woman too much agency and have aided her disrespect to you by your enabling behaviors. The reason for the therapy is if you don't work on your self-esteem, self-love and respect you will repeat your same enabling behaviors in future relationships. You have an opportunity to grow and be a stronger person, but it is up to you to make the changes to grow. My new job came with very good health insurance and I am already moving in this direction. Thank you for the advice, I have a lot of work to do before I get back out there, really just focusing on myself for a while. Now for the last story. Soon to be ex-wife is upset I told my parents about her affair. Original post. My wife and I are separated after 14 years of marriage. Today she called and asked if I told my parents about her affair, and I said yes. I said I needed to because of the way she has recently been acting and making me feel I'm going crazy. I found out about her two-year affair in 2019. We tried to reconcile but obviously it didn't work. We never had an agreement to keep the affair between the two of us. In fact, I did keep it secret until now. I told my parents to keep the affair between the three of us and I trust they will. She went ballistic, stating, you better pray your mom keeps her f***ing yap shut because if our kids find out about our private marriage issues, I will tell everyone everything. Mind you, there has never been an issue of anyone on my side of the family keeping a secret. Her side cannot keep anything private to save their lives. And, go ahead and tell people, I've got a lot more ammo than you if you want to start spreading dirty laundry. She wanted me to call my mom and see who she's told and impress upon her the importance of keeping it from kids. Obvious I told her I was not doing that. She was very upset the kids might find out, which they won't because I trust my parents. She was very hostile, threatening and insane. She was worried about the kids and what if they found out. The texts she sent are horrible. Very awful day, again because of her. Am I crazy or is this insane behavior from someone who had a two-year affair with very little consequences, until now? Thanks. Now for the top advice before reading the update. You should have told everyone that your wife cheated on you. You gave her control and she's a good liar. When they write stories for themselves, they will blame you. Don't be surprised if she tells the kids or others that you cheated on her. Indeed, OP you are in the control the narrative situation with the soon-to-be ex-wife. I would keep all records and correspondence with her in two drives safely somewhere out of sight and mind, until you have to use them to clear your name or correct lies. Soon-to-be ex-wife is trying to create her BS reality bubble, so she and her affair partner do not have to deal with the guilt and shame and consequences of their actions. Total Narcissist and Lack of Accountability Playbook If the lies and manipulation is this bad now, you need to be ready for parental alienation. It is a very common thing, and if the cheater is an unhinged liar, well the chances are good you will get mixed up in that second war. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst in this case OP. As for the kids, they will know soon enough what happened between you two. They will want to know what the truth is. Keep those texts that your soon-to-be ex-wife threatens you with. Kids grow up really fast, especially with the internet now, and they want to know. Keep those texts she sent. Document any and all damaging behavior. If at some point, she tries to turn your kids against you, you'll have evidence of her reprehensible behavior. You did nothing wrong by confiding in your parents. You can share your story with whoever you wish. And you don't have to listen to her or engage with her. Make it mandatory that you only communicate via a co-parenting app 
and hang up the next time she calls to yell at you. Thank you, and I'm doing the co-parenting app in the morning. I'm done with her BS. Why stop at telling your parents? Tell everyone, friends, family, her parents, your parents. I do not know the age of your children, but I would also tell them. Keeping it from everyone is basically lying. Everybody is entitled to know the truth. Why are you so afraid of your soon-to-be ex-wife? Expose her to the max. There is no reason to keep it secret. The only thing you are doing is telling the truth. Now for the update. Thank you all for the comments and suggestions. I really appreciate it. I will take all of them to heart. I know I've made mistakes in this process and I'm committed to not making any more. My kids are too young to tell 7 and 11. To be honest I'm scared because of the legal system and how it favors mothers. Even though she cheated and she is the drunk, I've heard so many good fathers and husbands getting screwed. I haven't talked to her since and don't want to. She's such a sociopath and narcissist. Thank you all for the support.